Hey everybody, Aaron here from the Cool Guys Nation and welcome to part two of our team tournament display board for Adepticon. If you are not familiar with the team tournament at Adepticon, four players make up one team, each person bringing 1,000 points. You play five rounds paired off, so two people are on one team playing a 2,000 point game, while simultaneously the other two members of the team are playing their own 2,000 point game. All of your scores are judged, including your painting and your terrain board. And then at the end, the grand champion is awarded. Now there are 105 teams playing this year according to the email that I just got. And we are working on our display board. So in this episode, we're going to take a look at our layout, our design layout. And then we're going to take a look at how to fasten your styrofoam to your wood. That's really exciting, right? Yeah, it is. It's super exciting. So before we start cutting and gluing and putting everything together, the first thing that we're gonna talk about is layout design. And what we've done is we took our sheets of two by two styrofoam and we started to lay out sort of our ideal board. We decided that we wanted to do a ruins and we are using a GW church, which I recently built and Josh painted up and we're gonna be using that as the backdrop. So the church is gonna go in the back and then all of our units are gonna go on the front. Now our storyline is that our four armies uh, are on this planet fighting each other and there is a massive Tyranid infestation and they have to band together to fight off the Tyranids and survive. Our biggest issue is that one of our players is chaos. So we have come up with a storyline that the Sisters of Silence have found a relic that allows them to take control of the chaos and they are going to be utilizing the chaos to fight off the Tyranids. Now that doesn't really make sense with a whole lot of 40k lore, but it is allowable in the team tournament. You can put whatever armies together that you want and you don't suffer any of the penalties for um, armies that should not be together. Now the other thing that we did is we 3D printed a bunch of Tyranid-esque terrain and I started to paint them up and we're going to be using these sort of scattering them around. So what did we do? The first thing is that we decided we wanted our church to be on the second level so we drew onto an extra piece of styrofoam these lines and we placed our miniatures down and our bases down to make sure that we had the right amount of size so that we can stage our armies appropriately. On the lower level we started to plan out our pentagram for the Sisters of Silence who will be standing around a demon prince. And then we also started to work on where the Tyranids are going to be coming from. For the Tyranids, we decided that we're going to cut sort of like a hole as though a Molbok came up. And we're going to use some of this Tyranid tree and we're going to put it in the hole. And then using a bunch of my old Tyranids, we're going to cut them apart and make it look like that they're flowing out and probably use the expanding foam to build on top of that. So over here we have the second board. Right now it's facing the wrong direction. All of the buildings are going to be at the back. And the next step, now that we have a pretty good idea of our layout, is we are going to adhere our first level of styrofoam to our baseboard. And I'm gonna go through the steps of that right now. Now that you have your design laid out, it is time to assemble the basic part of your board. And what we're gonna be doing is attaching our primary piece of styrofoam to our base. And the materials and supplies that we're gonna be using is Elmer's glue, a straight edge like a palette knife, or in this case, an old chip bag. Um, and these screws. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be taking the Elmer's glue and we're going to lay it out in a nice big uh, sort of circular pattern paying extra attention that we get the material on the corners and the edges. We've laid our Elmer's glue out as such and Elmer's glue is actually quite strong. It's a very nice material. The only downside is it does take a little bit of time to dry. If you don't want to wait that time to dry, you can add some hot glue, uh, which will secure it much more quickly and then still allow the 24 to 48 hours for the Elmer's glue to dry. In this particular case, I am not rushed, so I will not be adding the hot glue. Once the Elmer's glue is laid out, we are going to smear it with our straight edge. And this is just going to help distribute the Elmer's glue and eliminate some of the possibilities of bubbles. And what you wanna pay extra attention to is the edge. You really wanna get as much glue as you can into the corners and the edge. I'm probably gonna go back and add a bit of extra Elmer's glue to the corners after I get it nicely 
sort of distribute it. So we definitely have a little bit of Elmer's glue, not flat, and we need to put a little bit more on the edges and the corners, which is the most important part of this process. So we've added Elmer's glue to our corners, and once again, we're just gonna flatten it out and try to get really good, but thin coverage over the board. You don't want it too thick because your piece of styrofoam might actually slide around. However, we are gonna be adding some screws to help prevent that. Now, you don't have to be too precise because we are gonna be putting an edge on the board. So if a little bit of glue or paint gets over the edge, we are gonna be covering our shame. Looks like I wanna add a little bit more glue to the middle. So we're just gonna lay down one more streak. Our next step for fastening the styrofoam down is we are gonna place the styrofoam and we're gonna make sure that two edges are flush. So we have this edge and you can see it's popping up over here. And then we have this edge are gonna be our two straight edges. And then this side with the overhang, we're gonna have to slice off. And this back side, while it is hanging over by about an eighth of an inch, it should be okay. But if it turns out not to be okay, we will also hit that with our circular saw. There are two main issues that you have to deal with when gluing styrofoam onto a flat surface. And one is that you don't want the entire project to warp the styrofoam and the wood. And you also don't want the styrofoam to slide as it's drying. So in order to help prevent it from sliding, we're gonna be adding five screws. These are short screws. They are not going to provide a lot of downforce for preventing it from popping up, but they are going to prevent shear force or preventing it from sliding. So I'm gonna add one screw in each corner and one screw in the middle. And then if your screw pops out the bottom of a little, a little bit, you will have to go back and cut that off either with a Dremel or an angle grinder or just with a pair of pliers it's really not too hard um, and you want to be careful when you're drilling in to go slow because you don't want your screw to go too far into the bottom if you don't want the look of the screw don't worry about it because you can cover it with sand or rocks or terrain later but this is going to help give your board a lot of stability it's going to help keep it secure while it's drying and will prevent it from sliding or warping although most of the warping will be prevented by a lot of weight put on top of the board and there we go, we put our uh, 5 eighths in partially threaded screws. I tried to find screws where the threads didn't go all the way up because of the styrofoam. As you can see, the screw is not holding it all the way down. You could put a washer on top, that might help. But really, again, the screws aren't for keeping clamp force on it, they're for preventing shear force so that the styrofoam doesn't slide while it's drying. Now that we have our flat, fresh glue on, we have our two flush sides. Our next step is going to be covering this with a lot of weight and leaving it to dry. It's very important to get an equal distribution of weight. You want to make sure that it's even across your entire project. So what I've done is I've used some old bathroom tile, four pieces, and I put them down. It happens to fit a two by two square pretty well. Then I put some bigger tile pieces on top of it. And then on top of that whole thing, I'm going to put this excellently heavy box of toys, which is actually quite heavy. There's a bunch of metal in there. And we're gonna leave it for at least 24 hours. Although I recommend leaving it for 48 hours. Once it's dry, you can see that there's still a little bit of a gap here. If you wanted, you could add clamps, but you have to be careful because if you put the clamp underneath it, then you have a chance of warping it. So I'm actually not gonna worry about that. And the reason I'm not gonna worry about that is because we have our L bracket door frames that we're gonna be putting on afterwards, and that is going to keep the edge very secure. We have our weight on it, and I will be back in about 48 hours to check on the project. Okay, so we've taken our boards apart, and we actually had a really cool unexpected surprise, and this has given me an idea for a future project. But if we look at this corner where a clamp was holding down the piece of tile, you'll see that we got this really cool hexagon pattern. And when I flipped over my tile, it has a hexagon pattern on the bottom. That's really cool. So if you want to try and emboss some styrofoam with a cool hexagon pattern, you can clamp your tile down to the styrofoam and leave it for a couple days. 
and you'll wind up with a really cool hexagon pattern. Now I did notice that the only place it happened was where the clamp was physically putting it pressure on it, so you'll probably need a lot of pressure. Now it's time to check and make sure that our glue and everything held really well, and none of the problems that are typically associated happened. So the screws did their job and they prevented the styrofoam from shifting left or right, which can happen during the drying process, especially when you put pressure on it. All of the weight that we put on and the corner support did really well. The styrofoam is perfectly flush, which means that our next step is to take a circular saw or a jigsaw and we're going to cut down this line and make sure that each side is flush. You do notice that the styrofoam is about a half inch shorter. Um, I actually, I didn't realize that until I put it together. So apparently it's not exactly two feet by two feet, even though it's marketed as such. And of course we have the same thing on the other side. So I will be trimming that off pretty soon. That's it for this episode. Next time we're gonna be busting out all sorts of blades from the circular saw to the X-Acto blade to the box cutter blade. We're gonna be cutting off those edge pieces as well as starting to sculpt all of this fantastic styrofoam. We're gonna make our second levels. We're gonna make some stairs. We're gonna go over a bunch of fantastic techniques for really bringing your train to life. And then the episode after that, we're gonna get into painting. So until next time, this has been Aaron from the Cool Guys Nation.